Hello guys, welcome to the second lesson of the CSS Grid Bite Size Tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to be looking at the properties of the grid container, or sometimes referred to as a parent element. Hi right guys, so we're inside VS Code and we're inside a folder called CSS Grid Parent Properties with two files of index.html and style.css. Link the style sheet and the head tag and also giving it a title. And then inside the body, I've just given it a heading um, with CSS grid parent properties just to make it look a little bit neater. And then underneath this, we've got a div with a glass of grid container, which is, of course can act as our grid container. And then we've got nine grid items inside, each with a general class of grid items. And then they've also got their own ID, so item one, two, three, all the way to nine. And then inside the style sheet, I've just given it some general styling, so some reset styling here, so no marginal padding, box size and border box. And I've also centered the heading. And then I've also just given some general styles to the grid items. So we're going to open this up in live server to see what it looks like. And just split screen this. And there you go, there's our nine grid items, there's our heading, um, and there's just some general styling um, for each of our grid items. So the first thing we need to do, similar to Flexbox, is create a container instead of a flex container, a grid container in this case. And the way we do this is we go inside the grid container class, so this one here, so the div of the class of grid container. Go in here where I put a comment grid style in, and then display property, grid. And not much changes, but these now are grid items, and now we can use other properties uh, to lay out these items in different ways. I got to the first properties we're going to be looking at is grid template columns and grid template rows. So as we saw when we set the display value to grid, not much change. But our first point of call is defining how many columns we want our grid to have. So we've got nine items here, and we want to make this even, so I'm just going to put in three columns. So the way we do that is we go underneath display grid, and then just type in here grid template columns and the way grid template columns works is every unit of measurement we put in here will count as a column so 200 pixels will create one column there you go there's our first column and we want to make three so we need two more and there you go now we have let's just zoom into this a little bit and now we have three columns so one column is 200 pixels 200 pixels 200 pixels three columns and once it gets to the third column because we haven't defined any more columns it'll just start a new row and then the process will just keep repeating itself. Now this looks nice and we've created a nice little even grid here, but the issue we've got here is that we've using pixels as measurements. And if I grab the browser and then I try and make the screen size smaller, you can see it's not really responsive. And now I need this scroll bar to see the rest of the content. So I'm just gonna put this back. Now what we could use instead is something more responsive like percentages. So we'll go inside here and instead of pixels, we'll do 30%, 30%, and 30% so we've got our three columns again and it kind of looks similar but now if we make this browser smaller you can see now it shrinks with the browser so it looks a lot more responsive and more neat so I'm just gonna put this back again now it's great that it's more responsive but it's still a bit more of an issue and that's its available space here on the right so instead of percentages with grid you can use fractions and they work similar to flex grow so I'll just demonstrate how that works so instead of percentages we'll just put one FR so that's one column, one FR, and one FR. And you can see now it spans across the whole width of the page and it fills up all the available space. And if we shrink the screen size down, you can see it's also responsive and also covers the whole width of the browser. Now this is much better and looks much neater, but an, an inconvenience you might run into later is if you want to use more than three columns. So let's just say you wanted to use 10. So instead of writing one FR 10 times, you can actually use this other, you can actually use repeat. So how repeat works is you just write in repeat and now this has two values. So the first value is how many columns you want. So it's three columns and then we want this to be responsive. So we're going to make it one FR and now we have the exact same result and there's our three column grid. So now let's talk about height and rows guys. Now as you can see in the browser we have three rows and the reason we have three rows is because we have nine bits of content and as mentioned the automatic behavior of rows is triggered by the values we put in our grid template columns. And what we've done in grid template columns is given it three columns. So once it gets to the third, past the third column, it'll start a new row into the first line of the columns. And like I mentioned, this is the automatic behavior of rows. And because nine divided by three is three, we get three rows and the process will keep repeating itself. So if we put in three more grid items in here, or two more, you see it'll just start into a new line and then it'll just keep repeating itself. Now the height of this rows here is dictated by the pattern we set out in our style sheet, so by 20 pixels. So if I comment this out, you can see now the height is just dictated by the content, so the numbers. So I'm just going to uncomment that again. 
Now this is when the grid system can really shine because we can dictate both the width and the height of our columns and rows. So let's take these three rows that we've already got and let's just say we want to make them 200 pixels tall. So we'll go underneath grid template columns and then it's grid template rows now. And what we'll do is repeat three, it's already three, but we'll put in 200 pixels. And now each row is 200 pixels tall. And this is really good and actually really helpful because dealing with CSS normally and dealing with heights can be really tricky and a real pain. But with grid template rows, it's just really, it's just made this really easy. But we might run into issues later again with pixels because it's a fixed unit of measurement. So to demonstrate what I mean is if I give grid item two some dummy text, so let's just give it 35. And what's essentially happened here is that in our grid template rows property, the value we've set, which is 200 pixels, has overridden any height that the content needs. Um, so we can see it in full. But we can actually easily fix this issue with a min max. So we'll go inside here, delete the 200 pixels and just type in here min max, put some brackets. So the first thing we want is to define how tall we want our content or our rows. So we're just going to put in here 200 pixels like it previously was. But then if we wanted to put a content in one of our rows, we set the auto. So now you can see that we've got three rows as we set out here. Then we've got a minimum height of 200 pixels for each of the rows. And then if we add any content, the auto gets triggered and then it will automatically accommodate the height needed to show all the content. So the next properties we're going to be looking at is the alignment properties. Oh guys, so to help me demonstrate how alignment works, I've opened up the inspector tool here and then I've also given the grid container some general styling. So I've added some width of 90% and margin auto to center it. And then I've added a border of solid three pixels, color blue. And then I've just given it some height of 500 pixels. So if we head into the dev tools here and I hover over the div of the class of grid container, you can see the outline of the grid container and you can also see the outline of all the grid cells. Now if I go into grid cell one, you can see that the content fills up the whole width and the height of the grid cell and that's because by default this is set to stretch but we can actually affect this behavior so first let's just look at lining our content horizontally within the grid cells so what I'm going to do is go underneath grid template rows and then I'm just going to keep it hovering over the grid container so to horizontally align our content within a grid cell we use a justify items property so justify items and let's just say start and as you can see, the content in each grid cell is lined up at the start now. So you've also got end. And now all the content is lined up at the end of the grid cell. And then you've also got center. And now all the content is lined up in the middle. Now you can see here that vertically it's still stretched. So we can actually affect this behavior too with the align items property. So align, align items. So we've also got start here. And now our items are horizontally lined in the middle, but vertically aligned at the start. And notice here, guys, that I'm not using flex start or flex end for grid. It's just start and end. Now we've also got end. So horizontally, it's still in the center, but vertically, now it's at the end. And then we can align the content in the middle of each grid cell. So we've got justify item center and align item center. And as you can see now, the content is lined directly in the middle of each grid cell. So as well as aligning our items within the grid cells, we can actually align the whole grid container itself. And this works a little similar to Flexbox. So what I'm gonna do is just comment this out and then I'm just gonna give them a fixed unit of measurement. So I'm just gonna say 100 pixels and 100 pixels. And then I'm gonna go inside the dev tool again and hover over the grid container. And then what I'm gonna do is go underneath and as mentioned, this works similar to Flexbox. So to align our grid container horizontally, we use justify content. So justify content. And then we've got start. And it doesn't really move because it's already at the start. We've got center. Now this now our grid container is, set, is centered horizontally. And then we've also got end. And as you guessed, it's horizontally lined our content at the end of the grid container. Now again, like Flexbox, we can put space between our content. So we've got space between. And then we've also got around. And then we've also got evenly. So what we're gonna do is just put this back to center. Now again, this is just horizontally, but we can also align the content vertically. So let's just go in here and we do this with the align content property. And just like justify content, you've got start, which will just keep it there because it's already at start. Got center, which will put the item, which will put the content bang in the middle, and 
which will put the item vertically at the end and then you've also got space between space around and space evenly and there you go guys with just a few properties we can align our content inside the grid cells and also align the content inside the grid container and the last property we're going to be looking at guys is grid gap so in the browser you can see we've got quite a good looking grid but you can see the items are all clumped together and let's just say we want a bit of space between these items the way we do that is using grid gap so what I'm going to do is go underneath grid template rows and let's just say I wanted some space between our columns so what I'll do is put grid column gap and let's just create a 10 pixel gap between the columns so we're just putting 10 pixels and there you go we have 10 pixels gap between each column and then if we want a space between our rows we can do that so we've got underneath grid column gap just duplicate this and then I'm going to put row and now we have 10 pixels gap between our rows and we also have 10 pixels gap between our columns now like with many CSS properties we have um, a shorthand for this and it's just grid gap so if we wanted the same outcome here we just put in grid gap and then we'll say 10 pixels and there you go we have a 10 pixels gap in our rows and then a 10 pixels gap in our columns but that'll be it for this video guys i really hope you enjoyed the content and i really hope you learned something today and as always if you could please hit the like button and please consider subscribing because it helps the channel grow in the next video we're going to be looking at the child properties of the grid container